right, biology students, this is going to be a little bit of a test run because I'm trying out a new uh, document cam. So if it works, uh, you'll know because this is the video I'm going to be using. And if it doesn't work, then we don't have to worry about it. All right. So we've been talking about uh, monohybrid crosses where we're just looking at one trait that an organism has. And now we're going to kind of step it up. We're going to be looking at dihybrid crosses. And this one and this uh, has two traits going with it, because remember the prefix mono means one, and di means two. So it's just a mono hybrid, but a little bit of a step up. Um, here are just some examples that I got. So we're going to do a couple of these together. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you, or you'll be able to understand where these letters are coming from and why they get set up a certain way. So we're going to try our best. All right, let's get it. So in rabbits, we have black hair is dominant to brown. So right away, I am going to kind of organize my thoughts. So I know I'm going to do, uh, this is a dominant, so it's going to be a capital letter. So I'm just going to put my genotypes that I, I have the possibility of being black haired. So I'm going to go with homozygous dominant or big B, big B, two dominant alleles. And I'm going to go with heterozygous because it's got this one big allele. So these two genotypes, these two sets of letters, can phenotypically, or when I go and pet the bunny, give me black hair. So that's important. And then the only way, the only letters that are going to give me brown hair are little b, little b, or homozygous recessive, or two recessive alleles. Now, if this wasn't here, this part, Then, um, wait a minute, typo, this should be noses. My bad, everyone. Always cite your sources. Well, anyway, the genotype is still going to be the same. Uh, also, in rabbits, there are straight ears which are dominant. So we're going to go big E, big E and big E, little e, to floppy ears, which are little e, little e. And the letters and the genotypes are represented here. So if this little cheat sheet was not given to me, this is what I would do every single time. You always want to organize because the dihybrid cross or the monohybrid cross, if it's incomplete dominance or codominance or sex link dominance or whatever, it's just a tool to answer the questions. The more organized your toolkit is, the easier the project is. Okay. So we have our little cheat sheets here. We have a male rabbit with the genotype big B, big B, little e, little e, or homozygous dominant for a black nose, and homozygous recessive for floppy ears. So automatically, this bunny is going to have floppy ears, and it's going to have a black nose. So and I'm just using the information they give me here and connecting it back to here. So that's it. And we're going to cross this with a female rabbit whose genotype, remember those are our letters, a homozygous recessive, little b, little b. So she's going to have a pink nose. And I'm going to be looking at her genotype for ears, and it's heterozygous, so big E, little e. So she's going to have long ears. And we're going to set them up. Now, I'm trying to adjust my mic so it's still close to me when I'm touching a bunch of stuff. So what's going to happen is on the outside of my dihybrid cross, I need to have two letters, one for each trait. Normally we keep our stuff together, but now we're going to be splitting it up. So we're looking at possible genotypes so we can do our dihybrid cross to get our phenotypes, which are over here, black noses, long ears, pink noses, short ears. And the way we do this is there's two ways to do it. The way I do it is I just foil. So I know I'm going to have four possible possibilities. He has one, two, three, four. That is an ugly bee. Please excuse me. Okay. 
I'm putting dad's genotype over here, the male bunny. So this B is going to go with this E. This B is also going to go with this E. This B in the middle is going to go with this E in the middle. And this B in the middle is going to go with the last E. Let me switch it up. And that's how I'm able to figure it, this particular one out. And this is what I do for everybody. So same thing with mom or the female bunny. And hopefully this pen will show up a little better. But I have little b, little b. And I have big E, little e. So I'm going to do the same thing. Da -da. Da -da. Boop. And the last one. Another way to look at this is when you're in math class and you guys are multiplying your binomials, you do this and you can put your genotypes or your letters on the side like this and still get the same results, right? If you feel more comfortable doing that. A word of caution with this particular style, so you'll still get the same results as over here, is that sometimes students get this confused with just a monohybrid, like how you would do a monohybrid, and that's not exactly the case. So this is the old fashioned old people foiling method, because I say it's old because that's how I was taught. This seems to be a trend in math that you might be a little more comfortable with. Either way, you'll get the same results. I just want to put out a warning that this is not a monohybrid mono cross. It's just a tool to help you get these genotypes on the side. Okay. So let's finally solve this son of a gun. So a um, couple things. It all depends on what style you prefer. I move in columns from left to right. And I particularly like to do one box at a time. So let's get it. So I drag all my B's. So I have a big B, right? That's where this is coming from. And I have a little B. That's where this is coming from. And then same thing with my E's. I have a little E that comes down and a big E that comes over. And the convention is the capital goes first. And we're just going to finish this up. Big B. Little B. Little B over here. Big B over here. And I have two little E's. And that's all that can be given for that particular box. And so on. And so forth. Um, Solved in Punnett squares and it's super fun. You might notice that the female rabbit only has recessive alleles for uh, nose color, so she only has little bees. And the uh, male rabbit only has dominant alleles or big bees for your nose color. So start thinking about what that's going to mean for your rabbit in terms of them phenotypically showing up. So what are your bunnies going to look like? Dang it, Paula. So why I should have stuck with the pencil. If you feel comfortable doing this part, you can kind of fast forward. But you saw I just made a mistake, so there's no harm in taking your time and figuring out what you really need. I am very particular about these. So it takes me a second. I'd rather be slow and methodical than fast and make, make, make mistakes, which in the end just makes more work. I don't know about that. All right. So we solved the dihybrid cross. Now we need to answer the questions using the tools. So out of 16, how many black noses and long ears? So you're going to go back to your cheat sheet up top and think, okay, for black noses, what B 
allele combinations or big B, little b combinations do I need? Well, anything with little b, little b is going to give me a pink nose. So therefore, any of these boxes that have a little b, little b are not what I'm looking for. Well, I am Jesus. going to look at each line. And I like to put a little piece of paper, so I cover it up. I'm looking for little b, little b. No. Nope. Nope. Nope, all of them have a big B. Therefore, all my rabbits are gonna have black noses because they all of these, or sorry, all of these boxes have at least one dominant allele for a black nose, one capital B, one big letter. Now I'm gonna go over to my questions and here are two options for pink noses. Well, I don't have any bunnies with pink noses, so I'm gonna ignore these. I may have some with some floppy ears and I may have some with some long ears, but the question's asking for pink noses and long ears, and none of my bunnies have pink noses. So, eh, get out of here. Now I'm left with two options. So we're looking for black noses. So it's going to be a possibility of 16. All of them are going to have black noses and long ears. So I'm going to head back up to my cheat and look for my genotypes or my letter combinations for long ears. And I have big E, big E, okay. Homozygous dominant for long ears is acceptable. So any boxes with big E, big E. Or I could look for home, or sorry, heterozygous for big E, little E, because I have this one big E, this one dominant allele is also acceptable. So I'm gonna be looking at my E's now. I'm going to take my paper and then just do one column at a time. Okay. And because it's me, I like to highlight or put a little check or a star or something that tells me, hey, I already looked at this spot. So there's one with big E. There's one with big E. Scoot on over. There's one with a capital E. There's one with a capital E. Scoot it over. There's one with a dominant allele here for uh, long ears. There's another dominant allele for long ears. And here is a big E and a big E. All right, coolio. Then I'm just going to go back and count. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. All right, now. You might have noticed the pattern by now. So if you did, go ahead and uh, mark the second one. But if you didn't notice the pattern, we have 16 boxes. Eight of them are taken up. How many more do I have left? But if that isn't something, you, if you don't trust that, you can always go back and look. Our last option is black noses. And remember, all our rabbits, all our bunnies have black noses because none of them have the genotype little b, little b. Not a thing in this particular example. And floppy ears. So we go back up to our cheat sheet. Floppy ears is little e, little e. So we're going to look for all our boxes that have little e's next to them. I'm going to take my highlighter. All right, little e, little e, dot. You know what? Let's draw through those to uh, signify a difference between the two. I have little e, little e, check the check. Little e, little e. Check. Little e, little e. Check, check. Homozygous recessive for floppy ears. Check. Homozygous recessive for floppy ears. Check. Homozygous recessive for floppy ears. Check. And homozygous recessive for floppy ears. Two little e's, two recessive alleles, two lowercase letters. Check. I'm going to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight. Now we're going to triple check our work. We know we we're supposed to have 16. We counted, we marked, we crossed, and we're left with eight that have black noses and long ears and 
eight that have black noses and floppy ears. We add that together. We get 16. We did it. Ta-da. It's done. Hooray. So what's going to happen is I'll stop this video and I'm going to make another one that's specifically for this problem. This uh, dye hybrid cross was already kind of set up for you. So I'm going to show you some tricks to get this set up. A little more um, explanation on this part and like why it happens the way that it happens over here. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was not helpful, please feel free to email me and tell me anything that might be more beneficial for you or anything that you just didn't understand. And I will see you guys in class.